blog post 167. Date September 12th, followers 89,730. I know these last posts have been short. I'm sorry. Like I said, it's really hard to talk about what happened and I do want to get it all down. I want to get this over and done with. But just thinking about it causes my hands to shake. Glenn thinks we're all suffering from PTSD and he's probably right. He's right about most things. That might be his only flaw. But what can I do? He's seeing a counsellor, but I don't know how much good it's actually doing him. If he spoke to them honestly about what happened, they'd likely lock him up on a psych ward. I guess becoming an orphan gives him enough to talk about for now. I'm procrastinating. Have you noticed? I'm trying to avoid writing this next bit. Because this is it. The last post I'm going to write about that night. At least, I sure hope it will be. But at the same time, I don't want to finish it either. Because writing to you like this and reading your comments have made me feel the closest to normal that I've felt in months. So, thank you for that. Obviously, you don't need to be a genius to work out that I survived. What I need to tell you now is what it cost me. I waited outside a little terraced house, far enough back so not to be directly under the street lamp. The road was quieter now, the rowdy students had moved on and the residents were probably tucked up in bed. Inside, I assumed Kalina was talking Noah through his part of the plan. I only assumed this because I wasn't paying them any attention. I was totally focused on the footsteps that were growing ever closer. I watched in silent horror as roads turned onto our street, my whole body screaming at me to run. He stopped beneath a light, which threw his facial features into shadow. Given that he'd just escaped from being held prisoner in a burning building, I'd expected some visible signs of what he'd been through. Wounds, cuts and bruises, something. But there was nothing. Not so much as a scratch that I could make out. It was terrifying. Stealing myself against every natural instinct, I clenched my fists and spoke. I thought we could do this outside, I called. I don't want to lose my security deposit on the house. A light chuckle escaped his lips as he crossed his arms over his chest. Well, Merowyn, this is a surprise. I thought you'd have had the sense to run. But perhaps you want me to get this over with as quickly as possible. Well, I'm afraid you lost that privilege when you double-crossed me. I didn't double-cross you, I replied, remembering what Kalina had said about him liking the sound of his own voice. I needed to keep him talking long enough for Kalina to put her plan into action. You can believe me or not, but it's the truth. No one was more surprised than I was when Kalina showed up. Is that so? Because it seemed you had no problem fighting alongside her. It was almost as if you two had planned it. Trust me, if it had been planned, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You'd already be dead. A smirk appeared on his lips. I can see why she likes you. I might have even liked you too. It's a shame I'm going to have to kill you now. The plan was in danger of descending into violence much too quickly. Hurry up, I whispered, in the same volume Kalina and I had used to communicate with each other in the club, hoping that she could hear me. I could do with some help here. Rhodes took a step towards me. My dad was very into mythology, I blurted out at a normal volume. 
He'd get a real kick out of the fact that I've met an original hunter. You are an original, aren't you? Rose paused, his smile widening. You're not stalling for time, are you? He replied. I cocked my head to the side playfully. Like I said, my dad studied these things. How did you find us to start with? How strong are you? How many of us have you killed? That's an awful lot of questions. Well, why don't you just choose one? And we'll see where we go from there. I was trying to embody Kalina's cheeky confidence the best I could, and it was his turn to cock his head. How about I ask a question, and if you answer it truthfully, then I'll answer one of yours that sound fair? It was a game, of course. But I had no idea how to play it. All I knew was that I had to go along with it if I had any chance of surviving. Fine, I said. Okay, then. Who turned the new vampire in the house? Answer me that, Merwin. God, it felt like I'd taken another punch in the stomach. The only hope we'd had was springing Noah on him, but he already knew. How on earth, I said, not even bothering to try to hide my shock. Heartbeat or no heartbeat, he would have seen straight through me. His smile turned into a full-on grin. I admit. I wasn't sure, but thank you. You've just confirmed that for me. Who is it? Your little brother? Your boyfriend. Boyfriend is my guess. I suppose that means his career as a lecturer is over now. Did Kalina do it? Scrap that. Of course she did. Did she imagine this would give you an advantage? That you'd be able to beat me with the element of surprise? He was wrong on more than one count, and there was still a chance we had the upper hand. And we could turn this around. I had to hope Kalina was listening in and adapting the plan, not just bolting out the back door. How? I tried again. You haven't answered my question yet. I turned him. Satisfied? He pursed his lips, considering what I'd just said. I could see that part of him was waiting for me to go for him, to suddenly lunge. That was probably what most other vampires he'd cornered had done. But I wasn't most other vampires. It's become much harder to track you lot. Vampires like Kalina are more subtle, he said, then added with a smile. Her drug empire notwithstanding. So it was the V that led you to us. Not this time. I usually listen to the crackpot conspiracy theorists. I gave him a puzzled look. They write in internet forums about encounters with vampires. No one believes them though. No one except me. I see. But this time, I just followed the bodies. I haven't killed anyone. Well, not here, I added, thinking of Christopher. So who would that leave? Kalina. My voice caught in my throat. You didn't think she'd given up the thrill of a kill, did you? How very sweet. She's clever with it, of course. Tends to prey on elderly. People ask fewer questions when old people die. Although, the local care home here seems to have had more than its fair share of deaths. I was suddenly reminded of the old lady who died in Lavisa's apartment block on the night of her engagement party. God, that felt like a lifetime ago. Yet, 
not long enough for me to have forgotten. A wave of nausea rippled through me. Kalina had taught me to feed so I didn't have to kill. It had never been about her and her lifestyle. And as for your first question, no, I'm not an original hunter, but I'm as close to it as they come these days. My grandfather was, and for a while we had the honour of hunting together. Now I'm the last of my line. Kalina made sure of that. But I'm not ready to give up this legacy just yet. Now, can we stop the games and finish this? His leg muscles tensed just enough to warn me. As he leapt through the air, I was already shifting to the side. What I hadn't spotted was the handful of knives he'd thrown in an arc. Two of them struck me, one in my thigh and one in my chest. The pain, slight though it was, caused me a reflexive flinch, giving him enough time to line up for another strike. His body spun in a full circle as he dropped down low and swung his leg out, I tried to avoid it, but it was too well executed. As my legs flipped out from under me, I came down hard. The back of my head connected heavily with the flagstone path. My vision clouded, but not enough that I couldn't see the wooden stake coming towards my chest. A microsecond before it would have connected, Rhodes, along with his weapon, vanished from my line of sight. I was almost paralysed with fear, but... Somehow I forced myself onto my feet. On the other side of the road, the hunter was struggling with Kalina, who'd wrapped herself around him, one arm snaked around his throat and her legs clinging to his torso. At the same time, Noah had one of his hands and was prizing the stake from his grip. Rhodes free hand disappeared inside his coat, but before I could shout a warning, I heard a bang and saw Kalina flying through the air. She landed some twenty feet away, clutching her stomach. Rhodes brought out the gun from under his smouldering coat and aimed it at Noah, who was still holding his other hand. Noah! I called, but he was ready. As the muzzle came up, he yanked Rhodes off balance, just as I collided with the hunter, knocking him to the ground. Noah slammed his fist hard into his face, but Rhodes barely flinched. As we were about to throw our next punches, he rolled himself back onto his feet, this time armed with a short spear, another of the seemingly endless arsenal of weapons he'd hidden within the folds of his coat. I know you're probably thinking about Kalina now, wondering whether the gunshot had been fatal, but I didn't have the luxury to think about her right then. I was just trying to stay alive. Rhodes brought the gun up again. Determined I wasn't going to give him another chance to fire, I lunged. Turns out, that was exactly what he was expecting. As I stretched out my arm, he drove the spear through my shoulder so hard it threw me down to the ground and wedged me there. I couldn't move. I was pinned. Struggling against the spear, I could see Noah taking hold of the gun, but once again, Rhodes had anticipated it all. The instant Noah's hand went around the barrel, Rhodes released his grip and slammed the side of his open palm across Noah's throat. The gun went skittering across the tarmac, and then they went straight for their fists. With my mother's blood surging through Noah's system, his strength was greater than anything I'd seen. But real life isn't like the movies, where a new vampire is suddenly an expert in martial arts. Rhodes had been perfecting his skills for century, and every time Noah struck, his blows were a millisecond too late or glanced harmlessly off the hunter's defences. Meanwhile, Rhodes's shots were consistently accurate, and they started to take their toll. I was still pinned to the ground, forced to watch on helplessly as Rhodes produced two small knives from his coat and plunged them into Noah's shoulders. No! I yelled, 
as Noah collapsed to his knees. Interesting. Not the boyfriend or the brother then, Rhodes said, sneering down at me. Fuck you, Noah spat at him. Don't feel too bad, Rhodes said, with a small smile twisting in his lips. I've been doing this for a long time. Too long, if you ask me. I looked over to see Kalina staggering to her feet. God, the relief I felt in that moment. I'd assumed she was dead. That we were all going to die. But she was dragging herself towards Rhodes. He turned to face her. I have to agree. It's been far too long. But while your kind still roam the earth, I don't have a choice, do I? Kalina looked at me and then towards the gun, but so did Rhodes. How about I'll give you a choice, he said, pulling a small shiny metal sphere from his pocket. I frowned, the object seemed out of place in the hand of this weathered ancient man. He noticed my expression and his smile broadened. Oh, don't get me wrong, I prefer the old ways. Steaks and knives are the best, but it seems a shame not to make the most of new technology that's on offer now and then. Don't you think? This here, for example, is a sunburst grenade. They're like the irregular ones. Only they emit ultraviolet blasts when they detonate. Useful for situations like this. I'm sure you'd agree. The nausea that flooded through me would have been enough to prevent me from trying to rip out his throat, even if I hadn't been pinned to the ground. But Rhodes was already done with me. He was looking solely at Kalina. Like I said, I'll give you the choice. You save the girl, or you grab the gun and try taking a shot at me. You don't have time for both. Kill! I started to shout at Kalina, but I didn't have time to finish. Rhodes pulled the pin from the UV grenade and tossed it straight at me. I couldn't move, and in that moment, I was certain I was going to die. I wanted to close my eyes and pretend it wasn't happening. Pretend I was somewhere different. But before I could, Kalina dived towards me. With her hand sweeping upwards, she plucked the grenade from the air and sent it hurtling back towards Rhodes before landing with a crash next to me. It flew wide past his head and I watched as another smile flickered on his face. Any remnant of hope left me. But suddenly, it was in Noah's hand and before Rhodes could react, he'd pushed himself to his feet and wrapped him in an embrace. The grenade trapped between them. Even with their bodies blocking the full force of the blast, the returning flash seared my skin, though it was nothing compared to what I felt as Kalina ripped the spear from my shoulder. As I tried to overcome the pain, my eyes fell on Noah. He was lying flat on the back, his body resting in an unnatural position. Was he dead? I couldn't let myself believe that, but I didn't have chance to dwell on the possibility as Rhodes got to his feet, stumbling around in the middle of the road. Blinded by the blast of light, he had no idea Kalina was almost upon him. Not until he heard her voice. It's the end of the line here, Rhodes. Those were the last words he would have heard before she drove the spear into his throat. He fell to his knees and toppled forwards, forcing the spear even further through his neck. But my sense of relief was only momentary. I floundered towards Noah. By the time I reached him, I already knew it was too late. He was gone. For a moment, I was rendered mute. 
until I felt Kalina's hand on my shoulder. I snapped upright and grabbed her by the torn fragments of her clothes. What did you do? I screamed at her. What did you do? You let him die. You let him die. It was the only way, Rin. No, we could have done it differently. We could have... We could have saved him. She prized my hands off and held me by the shoulders. It was the only way, and it was what he wanted. This was his choice. What? I jerked away from her. You don't mean that. You don't know what you're saying. I'm sorry. I know this is hard to hear, but this is what he asked me to do. He asked for this, Rin. He didn't want to live like us. He didn't want to be what we are. I have proof. I can show you. She pulled a scrunched up piece of paper from her pocket. It was the letter I'd written to him, only the reverse was now covered in his distinctive handwriting. I didn't have the strength to reach for it, let alone read it, as my knees buckled. No, no, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't leave me. But even as I said the words, I knew it was the truth. You lost me the moment you turned me into this. That's what he told me. But I'd refuse to believe it. We'd had an eternity ahead of us, I thought. Forever to put things right. Please, I said, lifting his limp body and clasping it to my chest. There has to be a way to fix this. Could I give him more venom? Would that work? Rin, he's gone. No, he can't be. He's gone. How those words rattled around my head. He was gone. He had chosen to go. To leave me. To save me. I laid him gently back on the ground and stepped away staring in disbelief. Dad, Mum, and now Noah. All of them gone because of me. A cold breeze blew down the street. Lights were starting to flicker on in nearby houses. We need to get out of here, Kalina said, tugging on my arm. If we're quick, we can probably catch up with Finn and Glenn. I doubt they've got very far. And just like that, I let her drag me away. Blog post 168. Date September 13th. Followers 89,909. I know I've said this before, but I'm going to be taking a break from this whole blogging thing. There are a couple more posts I need to write up to tie up all the loose ends, but then that's it. I won't say I'll never come back. I've learnt that lesson already, but I don't have plans to. I don't have plans for anything, really. I've just been living one day at a time. Although living is probably the wrong word to use for so many reasons. Today, though, before I bring you up to date with where I am now, there are a few questions you wanted answering. And you know I can't resist those. What happened to the bodies? The neighbours, understandably, called the police and an investigation took place. They were unable to identify Rhodes and decided he was likely a drifter who'd killed my mother and then been impaled on the spear when the grenade that killed Noah had gone off. It all sounded terribly convenient and the officer who spoke to us didn't seem all that convinced. Finn and I had told them we'd been caught up in the nightclub incident, and they'd accepted this alibi. Kalina had made herself unavailable for questioning. A terrible event. That was how the newspapers reported it. The details were sketchy at best, lots of blanks, no names given. One alluded to a cult... Another online report suggested gang violence. Still, 
Both were better than a headline reading Vampires in Midnight Showdown. Glenn and I held a small service for Mum, after which we headed down to the sea to scatter her ashes. Part of me wishes we could have done it at the farm, the same as we did with Dad's, but going back there was something neither of us could handle. Finn took Noah's body back to their parents for the funeral. He asked me to join them, but I didn't. How could I? I was the reason he'd died. What have you been doing all this time? Obviously, Glenn and I couldn't face going back to our house, and while the university offered us alternative accommodation, we actually decided to stay with Finn for a bit. That's what it was meant to be, anyway, though nine months on and we're still here. Well, I am. Glenn's with Jonty most of the time, and overall he's doing pretty amazing. I don't understand how he can wake up each day and carry on as normal, but I think Jonty might have a lot to do with it. I might have misjudged that one. He's actually a pretty good guy, which means, yes, I have met him. And I'm glad Glenn has someone special. Because of that, I made a decision recently. I did what I should have done years ago. I set him free. It happened the same day I posted to you that we'd been for a walk. But I've been holding on to it. Standing in the middle of the park, I handed him a letter. What's this? he said. Read it. I watched his eyes scan up and down the page. A deep furrow formed between his brows. I don't understand, he said finally. Considering how damn smart he is, I suspect that was just a lie. He didn't want to admit what he was reading. You've been the best baby brother that I could ever have asked for, Glenn. That's the truth of it. You have put me first so often. It's time you went your own way. Silence descended on us and I could hear his heart pounding. It took him a while to respond. You're going to leave me, aren't you? He whispered. This is your share of money from the farmhouse. It's a lot. You can do what you want with it, which is pretty much anything. You can stay here, finish your course, or quit medicine altogether. You could become a pilot or an engineer or a yoga instructor. A yoga instructor? He laughed through his tears. You get what I mean. You're not stuck with me anymore. No blackout curtains or tranquilizer shots in your top drawer. No having to go to friends' houses because there's a comatose vampire at home. You get to start your life now, Glenn. You get to have a life. But what if I like being stuck with you? You don't. His eyes were sad and red-ringed, but I detected the slightest hint of a smile there. He held my gaze for a second longer before wrapping his arms tightly around me. What will you do? He asked. Where will you go? Finn's decided to quit lecturing for now and we're going to go travelling like we always planned on doing. My share of the house should tide us over for a while. When? When are you going? There are a few more things I need to get into order first but we've got a flight booked to Oslo. Wow. And I will speak to you every day, wherever I am. Perhaps make that every other day, he said with a grin. 
and had stood back so he could see me more clearly. So what else have you got to do? Anything I can help with? I shook my head, trying not to cry for his sake as much as mine. No, I said, reaching up and brushing his tears with my thumb. The rest I need to do on my own. There's one last question that several of you have asked. One that I'd probably ask myself if I were you too. And that's, what happened to Kalina? Well, that's going to need a separate post. Blog post 169. Date September 13th. Followers 89,912. So, I guess this is goodbye then. Kalina said, with a sad smile. The sun had set a couple of hours earlier, and the bar was still empty. I stared at a vodka tonic I had no intention of drinking. It doesn't have to be, I replied, placing my hand over hers. You could come with us. She turned to face me. Since that evening with Rhodes, she'd never been far away. Always there for me when Finn and Glenn couldn't be. She'd talked me through my nightmares, tried to comfort me as she promised things would get better and the pain would gradually fade. And she knew better than anyone. She'd been there herself. But since I'm burdening everything in the blog, I haven't felt I needed her help quite so much. Travelling the world with a couple of lovebirds sounds exactly like what I need, she laughed. We're not lovebirds, I replied defensively, and she raised her eyebrow in that annoyingly knowing way she has. You aren't together then? We're figuring it out, I answered truthfully. I'm sure you will. I didn't want to talk about what Finn and I are or aren't, when I haven't got my head around that myself yet, so I diverted the conversation. What will you do? I asked her. <sighs> I've been running for a long time now, but now Rhodes is gone. Her words drifted off into the ether, so I finished them for her. So what? Are you going to settle down here? There are worse places to be, and I've got Glenn and John T. You have. We fell into silence, then spoke at the same time. Thank you. <laughs> we laughed. I don't know if you should really thank me, she replied. Without me, Rhodes would never have turned up on your doorstep. We don't know that. Without you, I wouldn't have learnt how to feed safely. He'd probably have chased me down after a bad back alley incident. Perhaps, she conceded before taking my hand. I know you don't see it, but you saved me too. What I've become, what I did, I wasn't raised to be like that. It's not what my mother taught us. Not what she taught any of us. And I'm going to be better, for her sake and... and for yours. There was nothing else for us to say. Anything more would have likely dredged up memories that neither of us needed reminding of. I stood and kissed her on the cheek. Goodbye, Kalina. I'll see you around. Of course you will, she replied. Blog post 170. Date, September 18th. Followers, 89,932. Okay, so this is it. My last post. I'm at the airport with Finn and we're boarding soon. He's gone to find a travel guide for Norway. I just 
and wanted to say a quick thank you for being here. It's been a pretty wild ride and I'm not sure I would have coped without you. But before I do go, I think there's one final piece of story that I owe you. I was going to keep it private, but right from the beginning of this blog, I promised you the whole truth. And so here it is. This is Merwin Colt, logging out for the last time. Bye. Dear Rin, I'm sorry. Sorry for a lot of things. I'm sorry that this is likely to be illegible to start with. I'm riding in a rush as you wait outside for roads. But thankfully you were always great at deciphering my handwriting. So if the words get a bit muddled, I know you'll figure out what I'm trying to say. Kalina and I have worked out a plan. It's not one you're going to like. But it's the way it has to be. For all of us. I need to tell you first, though, that I love you. Because it'd be a pretty shitty love note if I didn't. Remember that as you read the rest of this. Remember that I love you. Then, now, always. I understand why you changed me. Had it been the other way round, I wouldn't have given it a second thought. I would have changed you in a heartbeat, so don't feel guilty. You did what you thought was best. But the truth is, I can't do this. I know it makes me a coward, but I can't be what you have made me. I can't be this thing. I'm not like you. I'm not strong. I killed your mum, Rin. I know she sacrificed herself willingly. I know that that sacrifice will give me the strength to fight for you. But it doesn't change the fact that I did it. And I know I won't be able to get past this no matter how much we love each other. I certainly wouldn't be able to. You shouldn't either. I'm sorry I'm not better at this. It's not how I wanted to word things, but I'm running out of time. I love you, Rin. I love you in ways I didn't know it was possible to feel about someone. Before you, I was just drifting I was just another cog in a huge wheel, watching everyone trapped in this same cycle of life but never really living. Before you, I thought I had all the answers and now I know there aren't any. There's just love. And you gave me that. You gave me more in the short time we had together than I'd experienced in all of my life that came before. You changed me long before I became a vampire. You made me a better person. So now, you need to make me a promise and you're not allowed to break it like you did the last one. Understand? I need you to do this and I will know if you don't. You must move on. You have endless years ahead of you and I don't want you to spend even one of those missing me. There's nothing to be gained in grief. It won't bring me back when you've had enough heartache. Now it's time for you to start living. I want you to fall in love a hundred times. I want you to feel the rush of that first kiss again. I want you to stand under waterfalls in the moonlight and dance beneath the stars on desert sands. But I don't want you to ever feel bad about who you love. I guess what I'm saying is don't 
dismiss Finn because of me. Don't feel like you can't be with him if he's the one you want. He loves you. He always will. And a love like that isn't something you should turn your back on. I love you, Rin, from the bottom of my silent, unbeating heart. Always. Noah. You've been listening to Bloodsucker's blog, book three, Lost Souls. Written by Ella Stone, narrated by Hannah Lynn, and produced by Papercat Publishing.